Welcome to the all new Marvel Roundup, the Southgate Media Group Guide to the Marvel Comics of the Week. As always, I am Phil Perch, guiding you through these Marvel comics with Charlie Esser. All right, let me start through my big pal here. Uh, I guess I'll start with Black Knight number three. Uh, it flashes back and forth. It starts off in, on Weird World, where uh, I guess Dane Whitman's trying to put an army together. And <laughs> he's basically telling them the Avengers are coming. And some of the some of his army are like, why should we fear these Avengers? But one of them is like the king of the Toad Men, I guess. Because he's like, we've encountered an Avenger. We encountered the Hulk. <laughs> so he's, he's a all... a pretty good Avenger. <laughs> yeah, the Toad Men are all scared because they're like... Uh... <laughs> I know the da- the Toe King's like I know the danger they represent, <laughs> oh. but uh, then they flash to the present and the, the Avengers are basically facing down uh, the Black Knight and his army, and <laughs> facing down the army. Deadpool goes confession time. I may have just pooped my pooped in my pants a little. <laughs> he goes scratch that. I pooped in my pants a lot. <laughs> uh, you know, it's interesting that the um, Unity Squad is going after them, uh, just because in Squadron, which I didn't pick up this week, um, but I will pick it up next week, uh, that's also who gets sent against them. Mm-hmm. seems that even though Tony doesn't count them as real Avengers, it seems that Steve's Squad is the go-to Avengers for most of the grunt work in the Marvel Universe at the moment. Yeah, exactly. I, I just didn't know if, because they were the main Avengers Squad, or maybe because all new, all different hadn't like officially set up yet. Yeah, I guess it might be part of that, um, and I think just the fact that it's Steve's squad, you know. Oh yeah. You know, when when you're Shield, they know that Steve's the guy that they can go to, even if they aren't always on the best of terms. Classic Captain America. <laughs> oh well. I think didn't somebody say that was in Captain America or something? Yeah, this week? Uh, yeah, in Cap- <laughs> the, the, on the arm of Cap, classic. But we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, more than a minute, but. <laughs> But I, yeah, so Steve's telling them all, we just want to talk, you know, we just, we don't want to fight, we just want to talk, all we want is the Black Knight, and, you know, Black Knight's like, I don't think so, but, uh, they flash back to New York months ago, um, cause I, showing you why the Avengers are after the Black Knight, cause he killed one of the Exemplars, and, uh, what is an Exemplar? Remember it was those guys who got their, oh, yeah, 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 they're yeah, like from, the same, like, yeah, they got their powers like the Juggernaut, yeah. Uh, okay but then i guess i guess i didn't read this or um well they find out uh i guess he killed uh the black knight killed savage steel in original sins number two. Oh, okay and i guess they i guess uh they find out uh from rebecca stevens that uh the black knight's been on a spree i don't know if he's killed or killed a couple villains or at least messed them up for a while <laughs> uh because well the black knight took off after he killed the exemplar and they're like the vision's like, okay, there's an alert from the mansion. Uh, the Black Knight commandeered a Quinjet. He is. He uh, is uh, so coming to the Ebony Blade. Yeah, but then back in the present, so of course the Avengers have to fight. And uh, Dr. Voodoo steps up, uh, starts casting a spell when the Black Knight's like, uh, your spell can't affect, you know, Merlin himself couldn't affect my blade. And uh, Dr. Voodoo's like, okay, well, I'm not worried about the blade. And I guess Dr. Voodoo conjures up... Uh, the ghosts, the spirits of the former Black Knights, and they start attacking Dane. Ah. Uh, and then flashback again to the past. Uh, the Vision and the Avengers are trying to stop the Black Knight from escaping, when all of a sudden a portal opens up in the middle of the sky, and the Black Knight's able to, I guess it opens up the weird world, and the Black Knight flies right in before the rest of the Avengers can get to him. Now, is weird world in the... Same battle. universe, or is or is that back off on some other dimension? Is that sort of they, what we're saying? They really haven't explained it yet, because yeah, they, they they haven't explained it. And then in this issue, like a, the portal just like basically opens up in the middle of the sky over the ocean, and he flies in. So could be anywhere. They had a similar uh, scene in Squadron Supreme, um, which we'll get to next week. No, uh, but uh, yeah, the issue cut basically ends with. Uh, Steve decking uh, the Black Knight. He's down, but then his army's approaching the Avengers. So, 
Steve decking the Black Knight, and the Black Knight goes down. Come on, people. He is scrawny, Steve. Yes, I know, Master Ninja. But, you know, it's not like, you know, Dane Whitman doesn't know how to fight, okay? I know, he gets taken down by a senior citizen. Jeez. Yes, I mean, really. I mean, love tiny, tiny, uh, tiny Steve, but, you know. No. Come on, kids. Let's be honest here. <laughs> but, uh, besides that, it was a good issue. I give it a thumbs up. All right. And I guess I will go to another number three, all new Hawkeye number three. Uh, let's see. It starts, begins 30 years from now. Because remember, we're going between the present and 30 years from now. Uh, basically, the Hawkeyes want to free. Well, they have one of the tele, I guess the telepaths, you know, the, the kids from before. Uh, they basically want to free the other two from Shield and uh, old Maria Hill, who has a, has a scar like over one eye. <laughs> Does she have an eye patch? No, it's just a scar over one, like her right her right eye and like a little patch of uh, gray, almost like rogue. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, just that one bit of gray, sort of like um, Countess. Uh, oh, uh, De Fort- Fortunata or something. Countess De Fortunata. Kinda, yeah. yeah. That's so. So, I've got a robot eye in the one spot too, you know. Yeah. So the the Hawkeyes for fighting their way to get to the the other two, and uh, they run into Kate's old friend. Uh, remember, this is thirty years in the future, so they run into her friend Captain America Chavez. Yay! <laughs> oh, she's now Captain America, not just Miss America. Yes. That's awful. And then they flash back to the present, and Kate wakes up in bed because I guess. She, She'd been drinking a lot the night before and brought some guy home who wants to spend the day with her, but she she kind of kicks him out. It and, happens. Uh, yeah. So she dials up her friend, since it's the president, Miss America. <laughs> uh, she's basically telling her about how she kicked the guy out, and she's like, no, you need normal. You need, you know, you should, if you see, seemed like a nice guy last night, you should have gave him a chance. And, uh, and Kate tells her, you know, I, have, I don't have time or my life doesn't support having all these attachments and she's and um, Miss America tells her I hate to tell you this but you're starting to sound like the wrong Hawkeye <laughs> and back 30 years in the future I get the other two telepaths and release them and Hunt and Clint's like are you sure they're gonna remember us and they do uh until Maria Hill comes in and shoots them in the head <laughs> the telepaths Oh, okay. Yeah, I was about to ask, who did she shoot? The yeah, no, telepath. the telepaths. Oh. Uh, and then in the present, we see we finally see Clint. He uh goes to see his brother who uh ran away with all his money a couple months months back and set himself up with his girlfriend and their and her kids. Oh, it looks like on some island. It looks like it might be Hawaii or something. Probably a private island, you know. But uh, yeah. So they're sitting around talking about the good old days. Uh. And I guess they start talking about Kate, and Clint's like, it's all complicated, and his brother's like, well, you know, make it uncomplicated, and he's like, he's like, she, his brother says, she's like the the best relationship you have going, because you didn't mess it up by getting romantically involved, and she's your anchor, and uh, she's the one thing you always have, if you just stop running, you just don't work without her. <laughs> That's sweet. Oh, yeah. yeah. So... Then they show, I guess, back in New York, Kate standing on a rooftop. But uh, Clint showed up, and uh, he tells her, you know, this is all my fault. We shouldn't have let them take the kids, and let's go get them back before it's too late. And as he's saying this, they showed, like, you know, 30 years in the future, them standing over the telepaths with the, you know, the dead telepaths. But as he's saying, you know, let's fix this. Let's go set it right. You, you see that the 30-year future slowly fading out. So, ah. I'm so, guessing that future's not going to come to pass now. Well, no. Well, that was an alternate timeline. And, of course, as we all know about alternate timelines, it did happen. It does still happen. But it didn't happen in this timeline. Yes, it's not the main timeline. Yes. Uh, Revisit that Secret Wars 2, number 3. <laughs> <laughs> but good issue. Had all the all the feels and all that emotional stuff. Uh, thumbs up. Hey, feel. Uh, all right. Let's get into my X-Men block here. Uh, which X Men? I guess I'll start with Extraordinary X Men number five. Uh, 
let's see, where did we leave off? Yes, remember we were in Mr. Sinister's laboratory. Remember I said, you know, what was up with Cyclops? I mm-hmm. said, remember I said it looked like he had a robotic arm, and you said, oh, you thought that was like some kind of like, like a, insect like arm a, or something? Yeah, Terrigen mutated army thing. Yeah, you were probably closer because it's a clone of Cyclops that Mr. Sinister created, and he injected it with human DNA because I guess he's looking for a cure for the whole Terrigen thing. Uh Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I, was, well, I was just going to say, you know, mutants are humans, and and it has been repeated several times that actually, you know, the potential for mutation exists in all hu- the entire human species, and you know that's why the master molds were so problematic because once they realized this, they just started killing all the humans too. But anyway. Yeah, because uh, yeah, G- young Jean Grey tries to like you know read its mind, and she's like. But she's like, that that thing isn't Scott. And old man Logan says, good enough for me. And he's about to, like, stab him with his claws. And, but then the clone optic blasts him up through the streets. <laughs> and uh, interesting enough, like, like half of old man Logan's face is gone. And, you know, some of his, like, side and stuff. stuff which he has a healing factor. But what he tells Gene later, I guess, is, uh, I don't know if it's because he's so old now that uh, his healing factor is, it, you know, it's not what it used to be. So it's a lot slower. Yeah, well, that's that's to be expected. He's yeah. getting up there. So the none of us bounce back from a optic blast as well as we used to. Oh yeah, and push you up through the pavement. Yeah. Uh, see, the X Men are trying to contain, you know, the clone Cyclops, and uh, Colossus takes down Mister Sinister. Uh, but like. <laughs> Basically, Colossus, I don't know, he, he hits Mr. Sinister in the back. I don't know if he snapped his back or whatever. But then another body comes over, takes the head off the old body, and Mr. Sinister has like a, it seems like a more durable robot body or, or I don't know if it's a clone or a robot, but takes his head off one body and puts it on another. Well, we've seen the detachable head head gag before, but uh, yeah. not like multiple bodies, but maybe that's a new thing. Yeah. But uh, so, yeah, like I said, Old man Logan's healing slower, but uh, he tells he tells Jean Grey, he's like, "Can you just block out my pain receptors for a while, till I, he, you know, everything grows back?" Uh, and then Iceman's trying to get a bus, a bus like fell over sideways on some guy, and he's like, "Help me, help me!" And uh, Iceman's like, "Hold on, I'll get my buddy, uh, you know, Peter to, you know, Colossus to lift the bus off you." And the guy's like, "I can't hurry, you know, I can't feel his legs. There's no time." So Iceman creates like a looks like a giant ice like hulking monster that lifts the bus for him. He goes, who needs super strength, right? That's new. He creates ice columns. He's he's uh, Elsa now? I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah. But he uh, he finds out that uh, the guy he saved wasn't inhuman because he has like almost looks like lizard legs and a tail. Oh. So remember remember back in the old days when the only people with lizard legs and a tail were mutants? Uh, yeah. Damn you, Fox. <laughs> but, uh, so they're fighting, they're fighting, the X-Men are fighting the Cyclops clone, and uh, Old Man Logan's like, it ain't an inhuman, and it sure as hell ain't a mutant. So he's like, only thing to do is put down, put it down like the sick animal it is, but <laughs> you see her said to die. Uh, so they're fighting. Uh, old Jean Grey lifts the Cyclops clone off the ground. Oh, hey, look, <laughs> magic. Magic decapitates Mr. Sinister again. Yeah. Uh, wah, wah. yeah uh, Why are they going for that since they know it doesn't kill him yet? You should do a cross section. Do from the top down. Cut it in half sideways. That might actually accomplish something. I don't know. Well, she decapitated him with her soul sword, so it's kind of... Isn't it kind of magic? So maybe that... I don't know. Because uh, uh, cause, uh, Klaus asks her how she's feeling. She goes, feeling much better. I keep telling you. I don't need you to protect me. I can take care of myself. As she's standing on the head of Mr. Sinister, and the head goes, evidently. <laughs> uh, but basically, uh, yeah, Jean Grey lifted the Cyclops clone off the ground, and he kind of exploded in midair because he wasn't stable. But uh, Colossus and Magic Free, Nightcrawler, who Mr. Sinister had prisoner. Uh, and then the cops and the media and everyone show up above ground. Then uh, everyone's like, should we run? And uh, Storm's like, no. She's like, Bobby, give me a stage. And, uh, just basically telling everyone, you know, we're here to protect everyone, mutants and humans, humans. And uh, she's like, but if you come after us, we will protect ourselves and fight back. 
and she's like, you know, we aren't, we all, we, ah, you know, the old speech they, they all give lately, you know, we're all not all Scott Summers. <laughs> and once again, it looks like Storms sees Charles Xavier in the crowd, so I don't know if she's, once again, is she hallucinating or what, but cause it looks like he's in the crowd and walking away, so. Charles is out there. Dead exactly. no more. Huh? Somebody. Because after the speech, uh, old man Logan's like, okay, Storm, no, what next? And she goes, now? She goes, to me, my X-Men. Nice man's like, nice. <laughs> so they go home to Limbo, and they're all are all going to go in the mansion, but uh, old man Logan's kind of staying outside, because, you know, he, he's telling Jean Grey, he's like, yeah, that's where I killed all the X-Men, and uh, she's like, She's like, yeah, but she's like, when you did that, was I there? And he goes, no, that was the one blessing. I didn't kill you. You were already long gone before that. So she goes, see, everything's different. You know, it's not the same. She goes, but you can stay out here. But she goes, but if you want, she's like, I'll go in with you. And she holds his hand as they walk in. No shipping. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, then old man Logan's saying how, how that, that big see-through kid keeps looking at you. And she's like, Glob, I think he's kind of cute. And he's like, cute. He's like, huh. Well, he's like, well, I guess anything beats you and Slim. And she goes, oh, I, didn't anyone tell you? There's a teenage Scott now, too. And he goes, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> wah, wah. And uh, next it says Weird World. So I guess they're going to Weird World, too. <laughs> Everybody's going to Weird World. It's the place to be. <laughs> All hail King Archon. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, another good issue. Thumbs up. There you go. And... Continuing on my X Men, uh, well, the rest of all my books are kind of X Men, so uh, I'll go with next all new X Men number three. Uh, once again, just like the other one, picking up where last issue one left off with uh, well, kind of backtracks a little bit because the X Men see well, most of the young X Men see the cops heading towards the prison because they're like, oh, we're gonna get Scott out of prison soon, but uh, because the uh what is it the ghost of cyclops tried to break out their member and oh yeah that's right i, I think wait getting... well, how is the cyclops in prison oh young cyclops yes, that's... yeah on young cyclops uh but they all all the ghosts of cyclops want to take off and cyclops tell them you can stay in here with me where it's safe and trying to get talk some of them out of it and they're like no 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 so they're about to walk out the back door but it's surrounded by cops and the ghosts are like uh no we ain't going that way uh, and the rest of the young X Men are nearby, and uh, trying to figure out what to do. And then you all in the prison, the ghosts of Cy young, the ghost of Cyclops are talking about what should we do? Should we fight? Should we run? <clears throat> and basically, Cyclops is telling them no. He's like, well, some of them are like, we're just gonna walk out there, take our mask, we'll just walk out there, and we'll get away. And Cyclops is like, no, that's not how it works. When those people down there see you, they don't see kids. They don't see college students. They just see mutant terrorists. He's like, they'll put you down on live TV. He's like, all you can, he's like, they're going to kill you unless you just, you know, lay down and surrender. Uh, basically, the leader of the ghost say, we don't care what you think. And then a bamf, bamf's in and gives Cyclops his visor. He, he's wearing his, his glasses, but not only because he has the visor. Yeah, you guys do. Uh, the X Men break through the police barricade and <laughs> get in the building, and uh, because the ghosts are walking out, they're like, "Only way out of here, straight through all that pork." And one of the other ones says, "All right, then, let's go make some sausages." And the X Men break in and say, "Uh, no." And B says, "Meat metaphors are a delicate business, my friend. Pork sausage crosses the line." <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the X Men are. Big fight in the uh, prison. Uh, then the once they beat, well, the kind of the ghosts on the ropes and the cops come in and uh, they say hands in the air. Of course, the X Men put their hands up and the ghosts are like, "Yeah, we don't surrender." Uh, <laughs> until they have all these guns, they notice all the guns around them and uh, one of them, one of them says, "I could drown all of you here with a thought." And one of the cops says, "There it is, take them down." And uh, until Cyclops. Shoots one of his optic glass in the middle and says, "Please don't." He's mm -hmm. like, "I know what you're thinking. I know how this looks. And I know the last thing anyone wants after everything is to listen to Cyclops give another speech, myself included." He says, "But see, I'm not that other Cyclops. I didn't do what he did. And neither did these ghosts. They're just dumb kids. We're just dumb kids." 
trying to figure out how to be mutants in a post Cyclops world. Ah, uh, yeah. The old dumb kids defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotten white people out of jail for centuries. <laughs> It's like, I don't know what these kids will learn from this. Maybe nothing. But I know I want to give them the chance. And they, the press must be filming because later on they show them watching it on one of their phones. So mm. He's like, as for me, I'm done hiding. I'm not pretending I'm not me. Cyclops has been a dirty word for too long. Time to win it back. Yeah. Uh, so at the end, the X-Men get in. They get their uh, little van back with the camper on it. And they, uh, they're like, where are we going to go? We're... <laughs> So where to? We'll pick we'll pick the others up and then go anywhere we want as long as it's outside Illinois. Because I guess they made a deal with their authority. As long as they left Illinois, they could be. <laughs> uh, yeah. then Forty nine the, states to go. Then the last page, I guess. Uh, somebody in the bar isn't too happy with uh, Scott Summers. He sees on TV uh, after he breaks the TV with his tongue. He says, "Scott Summers must die." Ah, uh, little old Toad. Yep. Uh, toad so, is that. I don't know if he's gonna take on the whole team or what, but uh. Yes, because when it when it comes to evil mutants, I'm just saying who who is the one mutant who could take out the entire X Men by himself? Your mind immediately goes to Toad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this is like standing up straight, handsome Toad from the movie. So he's all he's all evolved now. Uh, he's kind of green, and I don't know how tall. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, maybe they've evolved him some more. I remember because uh, Numeri used to be much more chubby and hunched over and then after the movie came out they sort of did a whole uh, a, a whole uh, team up with him mystique and nice man where they were like where they found out that toad wasn't really 100 percent a mutant but was sort of like grown in a jar kind of thing and then he like sort of get, got exposed to some stuff that made him hyper evolve and he got up yeah. like, great well he like <laughs> the beast he evolves every six months <laughs> yeah, you know. good times good times all right, and for my last book on my own, we'll round out this X Men block with uh, All New Wolverine number four. <laughs> and for those of you following along every week, kids, you'll remember that uh, last issue ended at jo- Doctor Strange's house. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, they're all sitting around waiting for Doctor Strange. And, uh, hmm, is this a, a bi weekly book now, too? I don't know. I think. It's not seen that long ago we had this book, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think they go bi weekly when they want to. Sometimes it is, sometimes. <laughs> Some of these books. Marvel, really, for everybody's sanity, save some for later. It is like Augustus Gloop's mom, you know, save it for later, darling. You yeah. know, save it for later. But the clones are sitting around Doctor Strange's house waiting, and one of them's freaked out because they're looking out the windows and it's only raining, out, raining outside one window. And then the other one's freaked out because the cupboard just winked at her. She's like, it doesn't have a face, but inanimate, inanimate objects shouldn't wink. Doctor Strange says, that's a restrictive role. <laughs> he is Doctor Strange. So, Doctor Strange uses the Eye of Agamotto to uh, look at the clones, and uh, he says, they seem much evil, but this one's innocent, this one not so much, and uh, last one thinking of creatively brutal ways to murder me. <laughs> <laughs> so, he uh, takes Wolverine aside and says, can I talk to you uh, in private, and She's like, and he's talking to, he's like, she's like, he's like, you're like your father, you're fiercely protective, you are your father's daughter, but she's like, are you sure they deserve your protection and salvation? Because of the stuff you saw with the eye, eye. and uh, she says, well, take a look at me too. But he takes a look at her and everything she's done, and she says, I've done bad things, bad people have done bad things to me, are you sure I deserve salvation? And he's like, and Dr. Strange is like, to come here from there, to be able to hold all that back, there's so much rage in you. But you are not your father. You can control it, channel it. It's actually a little scary. <laughs> he said, you're the right person to replace Logan. And she goes, <laughs> here they go all meta here. She goes, I know, there are people who disprove. Guys on the internet, mainly. <laughs> She's like, but I'm not replacing him. I don't know what I'm doing yet. She's like, but while I'm wearing this, he isn't gone. And neither am I. I'm X-23 and I'm Wolverine. Yeah. <laughs> and Doctor Strange goes, Logan would be very proud of you. And she goes, yeah, but he had pretty low standards. <laughs> Uh, so Doctor Strange says he'll help, and basically, I guess one of them must touch the cupboard because Doctor Strange says it's a doorway, and one of the and uh, Wolverine says a doorway to what? He says horrors, and some creature comes out and escapes the house and starts running, running through town. Doctor Strange uh-huh. says I have to, I have to close the gateway, and Wolverine says, "What about the creature?" He says, "Here, take my axe. It's, 
Well, all you need to know, it has sharp edges. You're Wolverine. You'll figure it out. <laughs> Uh, so one of the clones is shooting a gun at the creature, and then Wolverine chops off one of its hands with the axe. Uh, and it's gonna looks like it's gonna kill the littlest clone until uh, Doctor Strange shows up and says, "No further hold." And he, I guess basically holds the creature in place, and Wolverine buries the axe in the creature's head. Uh, let's see, so. One of the clones was kind of injured, so Doctor Strange takes them all to the hospital. Takes them all to a hospital. Uh, it's kind of interesting. He says, uh, because he takes the littlest one who got injured for an MRI, and he says, "Don't worry, I'm free to move around the hospital. They owe me for the uh, gnome incident." <laughs> uh, so Doctor Strange the- has admitting privileges in any New York hospital. It looks like it might be this one. I don't know, but yeah, uh, oh, there you go. He tells the other two clones to stay outside, and they're like, "But," and he's like. Wolverine believes in you, and I saw you protect people, but you also shot up my furniture, so there's no way I'm letting you in a room with this very expensive equipment. <laughs> uh, so, he's going to give the, uh, the one clone a CAT scan, and he tells Laura, okay, okay, clear the room, and she's like, I'm staying in here. He goes, the radiation is, and she looks at him, he goes, oh, of course. <laughs> uh, so, he tells the clone she has to be still so they can scan, and, uh, Wolverine's telling the clone, we're going to do this, I promise. And, uh, I guess Dr. Strange says he can't say, he can't operate on them because the whole problem with them is, uh, there's some kind of nanite technology in their heads. He said they're far too small and too numerous for me to operate on. Wolverine's like, how long do they have? Days, perhaps hours, he says. Uh Um, but he says, I can put you in another direction, though. I can't guarantee you'll win, but there's something else you may be able to fight this with. And she says, what? He says, science. Yay, science! So he sends them to a different kind of lab, and uh, the clone's like, what are we doing here? Are we stealing? And, uh, Wolverine says, we're stealing something. And like, they're like, what? The things killing Zelda are too small for me to operate on. And one of the clones says, so? So she says, so I need to be small enough to fight them. What's she looking at, Charlie? Him particle. It looks like it looks like the original Ant-Man suit. Oh, uh, Hank Pym really needs to lock these things up, or at least Scott Lang does. I mean, really. <laughs> well, when, well, in their defense, I mean, Doctor Strange kind of just transported them in, so yeah, I know. But you think about it, it's like you know, Yellow Jacket stole the Yellow Jacket costume, the the villain Yellow Jacket, the girl, yeah. and you know. Um, Scott Lang stole the Ant-Man uniform, and it just seems like Hank Hank Pym is a guy who does not, for, for a, a, an AI tech genius, does not really think about security much. Yeah, but uh, next issue blurb is uh, Inner Schnick. <laughs> and uh, so I thought maybe we'd see Ant-Man next issue, but uh, the uh, preview of next issue's cover, it's not Ant-Man on the cover, it's the Wasp. Oh, oh yeah, well, she's got all this stuff, because... Well, I mean, you know, Hank Pym is mysteriously missing. Where could he be? I don't know. Possibly dead. Or maybe. Keep listening. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, good issue. Only Wolverine 4. Uh, thumbs up. So it looks like next issue we're getting an uh, Only Wolverine Wasp team up. Okay. Well, that should be awesome. And transitioning. That was your last one? Yes. Okay. Transitioning from mutants to the Uncanny Avengers Unity Squad. Which also has a tie into what we were just discussing. Um, let's open up with that. This is the first book you and I read on our on our own, and um, together, <laughs> together. Oh yeah, not on our own, but on our own together. We both read this book. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, the Uncanny Avengers Oddball Special, uh, <laughs> and uh, we open up with, with a little flashback eight months ago. Uh, we see Snaps emerging from her cocoon. Her grandfather is there. He, she, and of course, what we see here is that um, she, of course, can uh, interface with animals, and uh, her grandfather apparently can interface with plants. Um, I think they had a uh, brother or cousin who didn't make it. Yeah, anyway, her brother hasn't emerged yet. Hmm, that's an interesting little cliffhanger. I wonder what. I wonder what will happen with her brother. Um, <clears throat> and now flash forward to Boston. Now, uh, where Synapse is confronting her grandfather. Um, 
basically, um, he, he says, "I will not yield, not even to, for my own granddaughter. No one can, no one can stop me." And he says, "You know, I've only been an Avenger for a couple of months, but you're the fourth person, fourth person to yell that at me, and it hasn't been true once." And then she what? starts fight, fight. Meanwhile, back in uh, the jungle, quite literally, uh, Cable, Deadpool, and Rogue are. Uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Voodoo are beating up on the veggie dog monsters, and um, uh, Rogue is complaining that the team is underpowered and we need more flower f- flyers, and uh, uh, Deadpool says, I can fly! And he says, come on, sugar! <laughs> Fastball special, to which we get the uh, <laughs> line, more like oddball special. It's even better than Logan said. That was and, so great. Yes. And then, embarrassingly, he ran out of uh, ammo and asked Quicksilver to go get it for him. And Quicksilver returns with guns and ammo and uh, <laughs> some some fat hipster gun nut guy uh, <laughs> with the big old handlebar mush dash who was a big fan of Deadpool, asked to come along. And, man, this is like... I, I don't know. I got to say, I, you, you kind of feel like this is some guy who is a friend who got written into the comic book because he gets to kill veggie demons with uh, Deadpool. And isn't that everybody's dream? Meanwhile, back at MIT, uh, the Human Torch is with his geek squad. Uh, they have synthesized uh, a similar that could cure everybody or it could ki- kill everybody. And, he, and uh, one of the guys says, I wouldn't want to test it on myself. What do you want to do? He says, and Torch says, I want to do what Reed would do with, with Lives on the Lines. He had tested on himself, and he goes, chuff. And the other one says, that's not exactly a clinical trial. It will have to do. Ah, superheroes, they just love playing fast and loose, you know? <laughs> it's like, come on, come on, Johnny. Like, Reed ever, you know, like, Reed made all good decisions. <laughs> Well, no, well, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, quite frankly, also bad decision, Johnny, because not for nothing, your superhuman physiology not dying isn't necessarily evidence that this stuff is safe. Exactly. But good enough for now. Um, to which they give the torch to um, uh, Quicksilver, who runs, runs, runs everywhere, inoculating everyone, and um, uh, uh, Human Torch makes a very nice statement where he says, "Kid." Quicksilver isn't just the fastest, he's also got the biggest heart this side of Ben Grimm. Um, and I mean, really, I mean, for him to say that about the guy who uh, married his ex-girlfriend. Yeah, well, you know what, man, I think they've come, I think we've all grown since then. You gotta remember, man, that was eight months ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, you know, well, but, but in all honesty, you know, Johnny's mature, matured a lot as life's gone on. Um, we, um, uh, Cable has a future flash where he realizes that um, killing the old man is bad. So he goes to um, Synapse, who's fighting her grandfather, and uh, Cable stops her from killing him. Says, you you kill the shredded man and the nightmare never ends. You don't know what you're talking about, she says. says did you hear that right? You're, you're related. He says, did I hear that right? You're related. You're both newly sparked in humans, aren't you? She says, he's my grandfather, or he was my grandfather. I have no idea what he is now. Hey, old man, my name is Cable. I'm from the future. And you're about to tell me my plan will fail comical. It's quite the opposite, actually, but now I'm here to change all that. Before I arrived, I spent time in my lab. My antitoxin is already being mass-produced. The only people left alive in 2087 were inhumans. So I made a second formula that removes the inhuman immunity to your plague. We, we wanted a little leverage in case this event turned out to be a coordinated attack. He says, I am prepared for death. And Cable says, putting the big uh, Liefeld style gun at his face. He says, I know you are. Mm-hmm. Is she? He shoots her with the thing. He goes, no, Emily. And he says, are you willing to watch her die? Um, he says, I was doing this for you, for our kind, for the planet. Em, can you? She says, I don't want to die. But I don't want to live with the shame of what you've done. There's still time for you to remember the man you were. Ah, and he says, now humanities will be worse. Famine, war, disease, rising tides. It could have prevented all that. Um, exactly. I don't quite know exactly how that's worse, but sure. Um, what's happening? My will is undone. He says, thank you. We'll get you help. We'll find a cure for what happened to you. He says, no, you won't. 
Now this, you've lost my love. Know this, you've lost my love. When we meet again, there will be no mercy. It doesn't matter that what you do. Humanity has doomed itself. But what's happening to you? He says, when I wiped the slate clean, it destroyed all my work, including this body. But I can grow others. It's the brand new plant man. Uh, so then everyone gets back together. Um, you know, uh, you know, Snaps tells Cable, you know, don't tell them, please. He says, I don't know if I can keep that secret. He says, I'll tell them. I just need time. Um, Quicksilver says, I just ran the city. The attack is ending as quickly as it began. How did it end, Cable? Poorly, but at least it's over. I'll debrief you later. Uh, what's wrong, Snap? What's wrong with Snap? She'll tell you when she's ready. Um, meanwhile, this, this next part's interesting. No, sorry. Um, that uh, I guess Deadpool tries to quit every, after every mission, and Steve turns him down every time. Yes, well, of course. It's like, I don't belong here. Uh, nope, you're stuck here, buddy. Because I'm Steve Rogers, and everyone does what I say. Because I'm awesome like that. I may be scrawny old Steve Rogers, but I still can knock out the Black Knight. You just watch me. Uh, <laughs> He looks like regular Steve Rogers, just with a bunch of wrinkles and gray hair. Yeah, they're not consistent. I'm oh. gonna write an. I'm gonna write a letter when it, uh, this. You know, this week I'm gonna start doing all my letter writing because I gotta write to Thor. I'm gonna write to Uncanny Avengers too, and you know, and just say, guys, can we like have some s- statement on where the heck is Steve Rogers right now? <laughs> is oh. he like super strong, Steve Rogers? Is he? Little weak Steve Rogers, but just as like ninja fast, you know, because he had all that ninja training, you know. Go for a no prize, Charlie. Uh, I will. Uh, <laughs> uh, Synapse says, I need to talk to you, sir. Presumably to say that, uh, you know, this is what happened. And he's like, of course, after you've slept and eaten. But fair warning, I have to prevent Wade from quitting after every mission. I only have time to coddle one Avenger. Uh, he asks Nate to stick around. He says, probably not. He says, that's a shame. This mission, this team's secret mission is to take down Red Skull and retrieve Xavier's brain. Maybe I'll be here a little longer than I thought. Yeah. Um, uh, and Rogue says, we could have done some of this better. Maybe, maybe not. I think maybe some luck turned up with Cable. I want you all to know, you did me and the Avengers, or- and the ter- Avengers organization proud. The world lives to spend another day. That's the only job. Now rest up. Meanwhile, in a distant galaxy... <clears throat> Because we don't know what the universe will throw at us tomorrow. Um, it says uh, we have a ship under attack. And then comes what is pretty clearly Ultron's face. I, I don't care um, if this was supposed to be, oh, who could this possibly be? It's like, it's clearly Ultron's face. Uh, happy to help. I was on my way home when I saw you in distress. Uh, that's the last of them, fellas. I don't know quite what he's like removing from the ship. But I guess he's blasting some kind of weird thing on the ship. Um, permission to come aboard. He says, wow, are you from Galador? A space knight? He says, no, I'm not, but that's a good guess based on my latest exo design. My name is Hank Pym. The Ultron. silver I'm wearing is my friend... Ultron. Ultron. Bum, bum, bum. So, okay, here's my question. Uh-huh. So, is he some kind of alternate version of Hank Pym? Well, With, yeah, that or... was... Or... Yes. Or is this the regular Hank Pym, and was he stupid enough to rebuild Ultron in a th- another form? Well, what I'm wondering, because that was actually just just the thought I had, is he's Hank Pym, but which Hank Pym? Oh, we'll recall when last we uh, left the Deadlands, there was a Hank Pym who had, uh, you know, 1872 Hank Pym had, you know, mastered all of Hank Pym's super modern technology prior to the end of the universe, and they had sort of domesticated the Ultron zombie hybrids. And, you know, here we see sort of a nanite Ultron, which we have seen before. The nanite Ultron, of course, was the one that turned Tony Stark into Janet Van Dyne. Um, (laughs) We all remember that episode when the Venom symbiotes attacked New York and Ultron uh, uh, infected Tony's armor and reconfigured it and Tony himself into a new Ultron that looked like Janet Van Dyne. Good. Yeah. In which uh, Skrull Ant-Man, Skrull Hank Pym saved the day with a Commodore 64, which made literally no sense, but we're going to go along with it because comic books. Um, uh, all in all, good book. Thumbs up as always. Uh, you know, you know, just I'm, I'm not coming across a lot of bad books right now. 
Although Captain Marvel comes out next week, and as we will recall, I was not happy with how Captain Marvel was ending. So, um. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, this was a good issue. Uh, thumbs up, and uh, look at that preview for uh next issue. Look, it's uh Rogan Channing Tatum. Oh yes, Rogan, huh? as thick as thieves. You know, I they had had they ever figured out a way to kiss, or did they just like kiss through a playing card? I mean, like, how does that work between those? <laughs> I'm trying to remember. There might have, I think they've at least once, maybe. You know, one thing I actually kind of like is the Avengers Six uh, preview we get there uh, with the classic, you know, event, uh, um, mm-hmm. uh, a Vision cover uh, from the Vision's first uh, evil appearance way back when. We all recall that. Okay, moving on to all new, all different Avengers, where we have. Um, sort of a death dream of Nova being attacked by Captain America and Iron Man, s- saying, you know, okay, okay, I, I, I think Warbringer's here because of me. I wanted to tell you, but I was afraid you'd be angry. Angry doesn't cover it, kid. The whole world is going to burn because an alien warlord seeks revenge on you. No, please, cough. Can someone, can someone, uh, hit me with a recap? <clears throat> uh, sorry. And uh, we wake up to um, uh, Thor giving CPR to uh, uh, Nova. They say the tunnel below flooded instantly. Iron Man, Thor, and I saved the rest of you from being crushed in the current, after which Thor quickly began cardiopulmonary resuscitation as necessary. A curious expertise for the god of thunder to hold. And Sam says, even in Asgard, people drown vision. So an interesting thing here, we start to we start to see some certain lines of alliance forming here. Um, Sam defending uh, Thor from Vision, and uh, uh, of course, you know um, uh, where we go from there. <laughs> um, you know, because we know that Thor and Sam have a kiss later. They signed the cover of something. Anyway, um, mm-hmm. we see that uh, uh, you know um, uh, yeah, we got two characters named Sam on this. Um, uh, Sam and Sam, Sam Nova and yeah. Sam Cap. So, uh, you know, um, and of course, Cap calls Nova by his real name. And, uh, um, Ms. Marvel says, Hang on, your name really is Sam. You lied to me. It's odd, Chief. He says, Hey, hey, whatever this, hey, 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 whatever this is, we don't have time for high school drama. Okay. This is Iron Man speaking. Warbringer is clearly a trained killer and a walking volcano, not a teachable moment. Take a knife, let, take a knee, let's, let's let the grown-ups handle this. No, say our three young Avengers, Spider-Man, Ms. Marvel, and Nova. Adults don't, says, adults get, don't get their way by yelling. That has not necessarily been my experience, Captain, says the Vision. I liked you before you gave yourself an emotion, uh, an emotion deck to me, Vision. You were longer on common sense. Emotion deck to me. Oh, I guess removal of his emotion. Uh, <laughs> just saying, Cap. Ten, sir, says Spider-Man. You, I'll listen to you. <clears throat> Come. The more of us, the safer everyone will be. Civilians especially. We're just in some with vision, man. Uh, <laughs> which we'll get to later. He says, well, we can't ask for more than that, says uh, Spider-Man. Uh, Superman. Uh, <laughs> Iron Man. That's who that oh. is. Let's go finish this. They go to a graveyard where Warbringer has found the last missing piece of the um, MacGuffininator. And... Um, <laughs> Puts them together to open a portal to something where there are Chitari with who Warbringer says, I do not recognize them. I do not recognize their weapons or their, or their, uh, uniforms. Uh, what is this? And, um, uh, Griffin says, yes, about that. We'll discuss it after as we see that apparently Griffin can fly and disappear. Uh, as after what says, uh, Warbringer in classic dumb supervillain fashion. Uh, scratch through. Um, today's science le- lesson, temperature of this, on the surface of the sun, 6,000 cal- calendar. Kelvin, uh, temperature of lightning, five times that. But he's still not dead. So, so much for that theory. It says, um, uh, Ms. Marvel says, do these fit together somehow? Yes. No. Yes, they do. But a down and dirty EM analysis from my armor suggests to me that assembly is what unlocks the window up there. So don't touch them. Warbringers on the ropes. We'll figure out what to do with these after. And then, nope, not quite on the ropes. He 
uh, burns Vision and punches a, punches Thor, and uh, Tony says, oh, crap, he was faking, and he's following off to bat Thor and Nova around while he melts the Vision. New plan. We open the portal. Excuse me? And it says, unless one of you is packing a god punch or something, uh, it says, but the army, um, says Spider-Man, won't have a chance to spill out, not if we time this to the microsecond. When I give this signal, I need Spider-Man to combine the artifacts, then destroy them within a split second. Why me? <laughs> Proportionate speed of a spider, right? Right. Complication, however. What? What is it? The graves. First, I thought there was going to be something like weird on the graves that was scaring him, but no, it's just zombies. Oh, actually, we see that Griffin is actually raising the zombies. Hmm. Interesting. So, um, four, three, two, and Nova goes, pushes Warbringer into the hole to make sure he goes there. Then, uh, two, one, zero, put him together and smash. We see Griffin not happy about the breaking of the amulet. Uh, I repeat, da? <laughs> Where'd the zombies go? Says, uh, uh, Ms. Marvel. A side effect of the air artifacts, maybe? Let's say, let's say yes, so I don't have to think about it, says Spider Man. Mission accomplished. Nice going, you three. Warbringer's gone. I still don't know what brought him here, but if I never hear the word Earthlings again, it'll be too soon. And then Thor says, he spoke like a, like a warlord with a vendetta, but he knew us not, unless, did he not call you by name? To Nova. The sigh he did because, because, because all members of the space faring Nova Corps are thus addressed. I would imagine a figure as aggressive as Warbringer has had many encounters with the Nova Corps, Corps wouldn't you? I would imagine, yeah. So that's it then. Not quite, Caps. Not quite. Caps said something earlier that got me thinking about how no one's really carrying the name Avengers right now. Not formal, at least, as far as I'm concerned. At and least the as only... far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yes, because no, you will not con- question the perspective of Tony Stark. <laughs> um, and so basically he goes to ask them all to join the vendors. And before he can even ask, uh, Ms. Marvel's like, yes, yes, yes. And, uh, yes. And of course, the uh, adults are a little more calm about it. But the three kids are like, yay, we're Avengers now. Hurrah. We see that apparently Warbringer has gone to some sort of future where he is pretty much immediately killed. Um, so much for being the greatest warrior of all time. I don't know about that. And in the epilogue, we see um, Nova and Vision, you know, Nova saying that he appreciates it. And that saying that and, uh, Vision says, as long as you remain aware that you are in my debt. And says, holy crap, I'm being blackmailed by an Avenger. Ah! And next issue, uh, Sam and Thor make a kiss. Yay! Uh, Sam's cap. Cap and Thor. Yeah. If it was Nova, that would be. God, God, man, that's going to be hard. <laughs> Who has a team with two guys named Sam? I'm just saying. Uh, no, uh, thumbs up on all new, all, all different events. It was a good book. Oh, yeah, thumbs up. But uh, just that whole that whole final page, and then what is that, two or three issues from now in the ad where they showed the vision all being all menacing? I wonder if he's under yeah. someone's control. I wonder, or maybe he's just, I don't know. I huh? don't quite know. Or maybe it's, you know, not quite what it seems. Of course, we also know, as we saw in the last one, Ultron's back! Yay! Oh, <gasps> boy. You want to do Guardians next? Uh, sure. Okay. You want to do the narration on this one, or? Uh, no, you go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I, hey, I, I did a lot in the beginning. You can give yeah. you your fair share. Okay, so um, we're on the Milano, and uh, uh, Peter is saying, we have to go back for Gamora. He says, and, um, actually, no, that's Drax. He says, we have to go back for Gamora. And Rocket says, we have to do a lot of things, Drax. You wanted us to get Quill? I got your Quill. Um... Basically, they have this whole conversation about whether or not they're going to leave Gamora behind, and they kind of make the point that, you know, Gamora kind of volunteered and also jumped out of the ship um, when they were debating who would stay behind Well, they got Quill. Um, Because it was going to be, I believe it was originally going to be the thing, who, of course, has been shown to really hold his own against this uh, blue lady. But Gamora wanted wanted the piece of her, and so the fight continues. Battle, battle, battle. Um... (laughs) He says, Hala, you will uh, cough, uh, die for what you have done here today. I see it differently, says Hala. Um, fight, fight, fight. And uh, 
you know, they go into this whole thing um, with Rocket uh, uh, basically saying, um, you know, uh, well, so turn the ship around. It's not until we have a plan. You don't involve all of us, all of us dying for something we didn't do. Rocket, your Glacken Highness, I am Groot. Mm-hmm. And thing says, you didn't actually blow up this lady's home planet like she said, like she thinks you did, right? No, no, I am Groot. Says, okay, okay, just making sure. Um, basically explains that they couldn't stop um, Jay's son from blowing up, uh, blowing, blowing, blowing up the world. Spartex is burning and she's coming for Earth next. Um, so they all agree they have to go stop her. Turn the ship around. They go turn the ship around. Uh, Gamora and Hala. Gamora's still holding her own against Hala, you know, which is, uh, she is the most deadliest woman in the galaxy, they say. Um, although I guess maybe Hala's uh, pretty deadly now, too. Uh, and she has Gamora down. He's saying, where is Peter Cole? Where is he? I'm right here. How can I help you? <clears throat> Will, you had the courage to come back and face me. I would not think you had that in you. Well, don't be too hard on yourself. Uh, we just met. I will honor your spurt of bravery with a quick death. Your your guardians have been accused, and now you will be punished. This is Hala. Hala, the accuser. Hala, the Cree. This probably won't matter to you at this point, but you're wrong. You're wrong about all of this. It wasn't me. It isn't me you want. We did not destroy your world, I promise you. It was his father, says Jax. Yeah, you got the wrong idiot, idiot. Mm-hmm. Insults probably are, are, are probably not the best negotiating tactic. Your father, King Jis- Jisan, king uh, of this world before you? Well, yes, but we're estranged. If you, the one time king of this world is to blame for the destruction of my world, but, and you are his son, it would seem my goal remains unchanged. Uh-huh. <laughs> it says, I told you that was, I told you that's what she was going to say. No one listens to me. <laughs> and by punishing us, you are not punishing him by destroying a planet that rejected him. You are hardly teaching him a lesson. He's probably watching from wherever he is, laughing his ass off. I do believe I'm willing to take that chance. You're making a huge... Oh, screw it. Kitty now! And Kitty does phasey stuff. And, uh, and yeah, knocks her down, I guess. And then Drax beats her up. And then, thing, thing punch! Uh, everyone fall back. A little to the left. Huh? Ba-boom. Yes, there we go. That would be clobbering time. Woof, says Ben Graham. Uh, Gamora's we alive. Scene. We get we get that scene they cut from the Fantastic Four movie. They drop the thing. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, that wouldn't have saved it, though. Um, <laughs> that, uh, uh, Drax is very happy Gamora is alive, and she goes, oh, it's you. But they're happy to be together again. Um I, man, I can't believe you were willing to take this fight for me. I thought you hated me now. I do, Peter Quill, but not that much. You're a rock star. I still don't know what that means. Um, mm-hmm. uh, careful with her. We'll get her fixed. I am Groot. And then uh, <laughs> Thing is still punching Nella. And Venom says, I think you can relax a bit there, big guy. I think we won. Not my first rodeo stretch. Better safe than sorry. Uh, Tuttle, and he's got some kind of weird shocky baton thing. Oh, no, he's breaking her staff in that. But Anyway, yada, yada, yada. I got lovey, lovey between uh, Peter and Kitty. And then Yotat uh, shows up. I am Yotat, destroyer of destroyers, blah, blah, blah. And then basically Rocket shoots him with uh, his big, big gun. And nope, didn't have the effect that he wanted. Um, um, And Next episode, Joe Tat versus the Guardian. Uh, really a fun book. I really liked it. I was actually really surprised because I kind of felt the first uh, three issues kind of had that slow go, but I really think they picked it up here and they kind of delivered some good character arc and story bit to it, too. So I was very pleased with Guardians of the Galaxy number four. Oh, yeah. Good. Big thumbs up. Thumbs up, yes. Okay. <sighs> oh, it's a long night, kids. Buckle up. Uh, only three books left. The Mighty Thor. Uh, what do you think of this book, Bill? Um, oh, I really liked it, but you probably, um, as much as I liked it, I'm sure you liked it more because we got a oh, lot of uh, Loki. Uh, had all the Lokis. They had <laughs> all the Lokis, including Cat Loki, which is such a sweet little reference to Squirrel Girl. I don't even know what to tell you, man. It's like, oh, wow, they put Loki Cat, Low Cat um, in there. 
Uh, for those who don't know, Locat is the cat Loki from um, the uh, cat fanfic, cat themed fan fiction written by um, Ms. Whitehead, who is the best friend of Squirrel Girl. <laughs> Basically, um, <laughs> I was gonna say I don't know how much I don't know how much of this we should actually spoil, but let's just say Jane Foster now has as guardian power and runs into Loki, who. Uh, what did she, how did she say it the first time they met? He tried to feed her to a uh, tiger. Tiger, yeah, hypnotized her and feed her to that. He was always her plaything, um, which we kind of touch upon later. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, so they fight, and basically she keeps on killing Loki, and Loki keeps on it not being quite, quite being just another illusion of Loki. Although he does says, you know, that does hurt. You know, just because it's magic doesn't mean they're not part of me. So it's take to all the parts of. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I was going to say, he literally knocks his head off at one point. Yeah, she knocks his head off, and then she sets him in fire, and then, yeah, so to call the parts of you and leave and leave this realm be. Your lives will not end the War of the Elves. All the parts of me, I wonder if you even know what that means. I don't know who you are beneath that helmet, but I gather you haven't been playing this game for long. I have, for longer than the stars have been twinkling in the sky. I told you I don't want to fight. I'm trying to turn the other cheek here, as the mortals are fond of saying. Though I would like to know just how many cheeks do you think it will take? And we see here we have all the Lokis. Oh, wow. Oh, we even have homeless Loki from Battleworld there, which is kind of awesome to see him there. And little kid Loki, who is dead. Um, and then. So, did, so does Loki, is he aware of all his uh, other forms or. Well, Did one imagines call- so. Remember, he he is one of these few survivors of the um of the apocalypse. You know, him and mm-hmm. him and uh, Verity Willis walked out, and now they're back from outer space. Just came here to find us there with that sad look upon our face. Um, uh, yes, of course. You know, we um we have a classic Loki kind of being. Uh, disgruntled about everything. And then, of course, we get Lady Loki uh, ready to fight Lady Thor because this will be fun. Uh, <laughs> and we have uh, the littlest Loki of them all, little frost giant Loki, and says, yes, we're all you, Loki, and the one thing we all agree on is that we're ashamed of what you've become. You talk about forging a new identity for yourself, but you're still playing the same sad little games within games, aren't you? Only this time, the only person you're fooling is yourself. You know what it is you really want? You're just too damned weak and frightened to take it. And uh, says, you're right. Suddenly, I'm really starting to hate myself, too. And he beats up all of his little selves there. And uh, uh, and uh, Lady Loki stabs Lady uh, Thor, draws a little blood. And um, it says, uh, we all know how this story ends, Lady Thor. You're just keeping that Mjolnir warm for a bit, aren't you? Sooner or later, the Odinson will come back to reclaim his hammer. Why not just cut to the chase and wrap this little charade up gracefully? Oh, one of the things I wanted to mention, and actually, let's just flip back to the front of the book, is, um, you know, when he's first talking to Thor, I forgot about this, you know, he does make the mention that, for once, I'd like to be a Loki, my mother, written in bold, can actually be proud of. And of course, we remember my fan theory that Loki is actually uh, Freya's son uh, mm-hmm. when she had an affair with uh, Luffy, Um which I'm, I'm going to write to them because they have a letters page now. So look for, look for that. Look for my fan theory in the letters page soon. Uh, <laughs> we'll read it on, we'll read it on one of these shows if you get, pre- if you get published. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll write it. And if it doesn't get published, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll say it on the show. But anyway, so big fight. All the, all the other Lokis disappear. Uh, as they are knocked out, and then Mjolnir is sitting on Loki's chest and says, I suppose you can teach an old hammer new tricks. Uh, for your next trick, I don't suppose you'd mind picking it up. He says, you said you wish to talk, so talk. Why have you come to Alfheim? Are you in league with Malekith the Accursed? What other forces have joined his cause? Er, you're right. Never really wanted to talk. That was just an evil lie. Gods, it feels good to do that, to be doing that again. Then why are you here? I was sent to kill you, but really, uh, I was only stung so that we could both die together. What in the realms? And we see all the, all the bats with Roxxon bombs coming down. And again, Roxxon, because branding. Oh. <laughs> 
Uh, Malekith is uh, um, um, uh, telling uh, Luffy, you know, um, uh, you know, this is the last chance to call this off. Luffy and says, "Do it," and may hell take both of them. Very well, they drop the bombs, and then Jane Foster flies up and says, "In the blink of an eye, my thoughts turn to thunder." For the first time in forever, I'm not thinking about all the cancer or chemo or the problems of poor, frail Jane Foster. And I'm one with the storm, willing to lift these bombs up higher and higher and praying to all the gods that it's enough. In that moment, I am not, I am Thor and nothing else. I am the goddess of thunder. Now and paboom. says, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I do hope I didn't just witness the last act of Thor. And... I have, you and I have a lot of, of work to do, Ms. Thunder, and believe me, this little war in Athelheim is nothing compared to the one that's just about to explode. And we actually see uh, actual Jane Foster uh, falling down from the sky in Asgard. Bring forth the prisoner. This court is ready to sit in judgment of her crimes. May the fates have mercy on your soul, Lady Freya, for all Father Odin will not. And again, why is he mad? Because he's sick of her cheating heart. <laughs> uh, great book, thumbs up. Uh, really close to being one of my picks, of, my pick of the week. Although, uh, it did not make it. Which brings us to, I believe, your pick of the week, Phil. Uh, yeah, Sam Wilson, Captain America, number five, was a great book. Really, I would say Thor, this, and uh, Secret Wars were my top top books, without a doubt. Oh yeah. So, would you like to give the narration on this one, my friend? Uh, okay. Um, we start off with, um, Joaquin Torres, who I guess who's going to be the new Falcon. Uh, we see a little bit of his background. Then, uh, we get, uh, <laughs> interesting point of this is that we hear, see that he actually is an illegal immigrant himself. So, um, yes. rather than just being a Mexican American uh, kid, he actually is, he's, he is, he's an illegal, um, which is going to be interesting. Our first illegal a legal or or an undocumented alien superhero in the Marvel Comics universe. Yay, diversity! <laughs> but uh, now I guess he's being kept as a political prisoner by Sam and his people. <laughs> well, that's what he's saying. You know, it's he is seventeen, and if you recall when you were seventeen, everything is just <laughs> all that. Uh, a, a mysterious winged menace terrorized tourists at Madame Dussard's. I just wanted to see the Leonardo DiCaprio one. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I guess D Man D Man's babysitting him, but they didn't have enough petty cash for one of those PS whatevers, so they settle for board games. Yes. You ever play Risk? It's very boring, <laughs> but we do have. <laughs> I do love food. That is one of my favorite. And then we get the flashback to Constrictor and um, Diamondback, Diamondback. and this is actually kind of sweet and sad in its own right. Um, although interesting in this. Because apparently, and I wonder how this all plays out, Constrictor does not have bionic arms in this. Um, huh, yeah. You know, pretty obviously, those aren't bionic arms. Those are, you know, his out-of-shape arms that uh, she finds cute and flabby. Uh, <laughs> but he's got, he's, got that, he's got that coffin sickness that kills you. You don't get crazy magical therapies. And... Um, that they were engaged. Huh. Well, you know, they were in love very much um, prior to, you know, it was the only reason they kind of fell out was because it was a wacky misunderstanding at the end of Siege. So it does actually make you wonder, since we see that Constrictor has his arms, it makes you wonder, like, you know, were there just certain items of the past that have been eliminated? Like, he didn't lose his arms in the in the battle of uh, with uh, KIA, the... Um, uh, huh. Um, uh, what was his name? Michael Van Patten clone. Um, or if, uh, or if he was actually, um, or if, or, or if that whole section of the Marvel history has been separated. Anyway, um, flash forward, we see how, how Diamondback got her gig in the dancing field. Uh, and who shows up? Uh, the white, wait. The Viper. Viper, yeah. Dancing. And uh, he, he's surprised. They, they let you take those up on stage. I'd hate to be one of the... <laughs> I hate to see what happens when the guys get hands. 
Um, and we get a great little, uh, you know, t uh, going to make America marvelous again. Um, <laughs> statement mm -hmm. from the Viper. They get a little political here. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, although I do like, you know, uh, Misty Knight in the lobby says, you know, uh, I'm Misty Knight. I'm here to fight the Serpent Society. Just great. Just go go ahead and sign in. Thanks. Fine. You're on the top. <laughs> yeah, you're signed in there. Yeah, I don't know. That sounds good. Yeah, I see you're on the you're on the list, Misty Knight. <laughs> it, says, uh, it says they're on the top four, but someone will come down to get you. <laughs> and then she's got to fight all the Sons of Serpents, um, which, of course, you oh. know. While Sam's yeah. telling off the Viper, and he's like, "You're no Dawn Draper. You're not even Pete. You're Harry." <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good. And we get uh, da, 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 da. fight, fight, fight. And I wonder who who they're taking a jab at when they're like, uh, "Afraid of losing your job? Perhaps you'd be interested in a border wall to keep out immigrants." <laughs> yes. Mm. Well, that yeah, they're mm. yeah. Well, you know, it, it, it's hard. <laughs> It's hard, you know. Trump kind of puts himself. And no offense, Trump is basically a parody. Of, you know, it, it, Trump is one of these guys you can't parody because he he is a parody in and of himself. And, and I, mean, I was just waiting for I was just waiting for the viper to kick uh, Sam out the window and say you're fired. <laughs> is, uh, I'm not going to kill Captain America. Okay, the ground will. Um. I'll come out and what are those like? It's weird. They've got like these like gigantic. I don't know cement cuffs on him. But we see That's that basically, like. basically, uh, Red Wing, who shares a psychic link with Sam, also shares a psychic link with Fal with Jaquin, uh, Cap and Falcon, and so um, we see that basically this is back back before all this is happening. Um, you know, he gets the he gets the psychic message from Red Wing that Cap's in trouble. And de and D man's like, oh, they'll be fine, and he said, and but he distracts him, rips his arm out of the out of the handcuff, and of course he says, but it'll heal, and flies out the window. Stupid window. Ah, gets back just in time to save Cap. Says for America, for hot doctor doctors. <laughs> oh, hot doctor, night nurse to you and me. Um, fresh from her series, her stint on Daredevil, uh, um, he, he saves Sam just at the last minute. Uh, comes in a little too fast on that on that conveniently placed building under construction. Um, <laughs> how convenient! And uh, or maybe that was just scaffolding of some sort. Uh, but they're on the ground, and of course, um, Cap is saying, "They're gonna be good." Uh, so, uh, sorry, you sound like you got some kind of through the wire thing going on. Is this a werewolf problem? Behind you. Sorry, behind you, did It says, oh, behind me. And there's the Serpent Society. Next issue. And I do love the art on that, like, you know, preview preview issue. Pedal on Wall Street. Stark Industries. Um, yeah, very, very awesome. And uh, looking forward to the next issue. As always, very proud of uh, Captain America. That's your pick of the week, right? Yes, big thumbs up. Yeah, it was it was really a great book. These, like I said, these are some great books. And now, oh, finally, my I was pick. Say of the it's week. been a it's been a long episode, and Charlie's chomping at the bit to get there. Let's get there. Oh yeah, Secret yeah. Wars nine. Secret Wars. It was good. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so we open up. Uh, Chala has the Infinity Gauntlet. Namor has a spear. Sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, but he's he's there, and uh, basically Chala confronts um, uh, Doom, and he says, you know, um, there's uh, gathered armies sprawling to the horizon. All this structured chaos it reeks of machination. Chala, you orchestrated this, uh, didn't you? He had some help, says Namor, and it's over, Victor. <laughs> this madness has to end. Come now, Namor. The two of you know the expectations that come with being a ruler uh, of men. I'm sure that you, I'm sure if you try, you can imagine the ones that God must be burdened with, and that has value. You could join me. I would raise a new Atlantis. I would remake Wakanda. I can give you back everything you lost. And what good would that be? A fake kingdom on a manufactured world, subjected to the whims of a vain fraud. 
You may have the power, Victor, but raising up a new Wakanda would require a vision you just don't possess. And you do? Is that your plan? You have an Infinity Gauntlet, and with it, you're going to try to make to take my power for yourself? The fallen king of Wakanda we born as a messiah? Actually, I always assumed mm-hmm. everyone would prefer it. It, would, it be me this time. <laughs> His name You thought wrong. Goodbye, Victor. And then they get into the big... Then Namor throws his spear. Crash shatters doom. It can't be that easy. It won't be. That hurt, it says. Doom as the battle begins. And they fight as God on earth, in the sky, and the heavens above. Yada, yada, yada. Meanwhile, jumping back. He goes uh, with his family. <laughs> hey, Greed and Sue and Val again. You, I remember you. And Doom and Reed says, that can't be. From what I understood, she didn't know what I was, what I was. Do you really know me, Susan? He says, yes, I saw your face. There was a hologram of a battle. You were from that ship and the fighting, and were fighting the Thors. You murdered Stephen Strain. Uh, actually, Mom, I'm not sure that's what. Of course, what? you know me from the picture. It had nothing to do with Stephen's death. It was doomed. You mean God. I mean Victor. Um, yeah. Yes. And however well-intentioned this world of his is, I mean to put things back the way they are supposed to be. I mean to end the charade, because this is not the life we are supposed to have. Not Val, not me, and certainly not you, Susan. Who are you, really? My name is Reed Richards, and I'm the one who fixes things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, Panther God, um, Chala fighting Doom God in the astral plane, and says, well, that didn't seem to go as expected. You know, they say you should never lie to the ones you love, which is why I never lie to myself. <clears throat> you might want to consider that, Reed. This is uh, the Maker speaking to Reed Richard. Be quiet, Maker. Listen, do you hear that? And the quiet, and the, find the quietest place in the world. Call it here. Call it now. And if you close your eyes and listen, you can hear the screaming. Did you bring me something to eat, Reed's? I knew it, but I wasn't really prepared for it. I'm sorry, Owen. I don't have anything. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm starving. I'm sure an infinite number of missing mouths and not being fed will do that. We'll do that. But I think we can help. So, this is the battery, the repository for all Doom's power. Yes. Hello, hello, hello. Hello yourself. And if you don't mind, please excuse me for a moment. Okay. I need to show you something. What is it? Oh, this is something I've been saving. It's a little time bubble. I know how hard, I, how, how hard it was to construct a device capable of creating a proper temporal bubble out of available means on this retrograde world. Uh, basically, he creates a de-evolution ray that turns Reed into a monkey. And, um, <clears throat> and he says, I suppose I could... Apologize for this portrayal, but I saw you almost start crying up there with that woman who isn't your wife, and I just couldn't tolerate that kind of weakness. What's the end game here? Nostalgia for something that was that was never really yours anyway. Really, read. Who's interested in a weepy god? Me says um, uh, says the molecule man. Hmm? Herc says, <laughs> "Did you know you can act? You actually can holistically enjoy pizza, and it comes in slices." And uh-huh. deconstructs the maker. Uh, meanwhile, the battle uh, with Chala is going poorly. Suddenly, as Doom rises above, and it says, "You tested me, reduced me to this wanton physical violence, but I remain Doom, and you, something beneath me, a lesser fool who doesn't know that he's beaten, a smiling fool who, who." Wait, why are you smiling at me, Chella? Why are you... Because we were biding time and you're going to lose all this structured chaos. It it reeks of machination, doesn't it? This is all a distraction! Uh-oh! And he comes back and... Susan Valeria, what are you... Is it true, Victor? Is, is all of it true? Susan, there are complexity beyond even my ability to explain. If you will just trust me as you have always, like Stephen trusted you... I'm sorry, Susan. I tried. Richards! You had to meddle, didn't you? Of course you did. You're a meddler! You have some great plan, I expect. What is it this time, Reed? A new idea? A fresh take on the very old problem of you and I? Have you built an, another great machine? No, nothing like that. I just came to convince Owen that perhaps is a better solution. 
to all this than you. A better solution? Your entire life you have been distracted with the modern concerns so precious to you and, and your kind. Ethics and order in society when all that has ever mattered was survival. I saved millions, Reed. Owen saved millions. And what was it you said when you appeared here on my world? All you could save was yourself. You couldn't even save your family. How dare you? Haven't you been paying attention, Reed? I dare quite a bit. I dare to choose between living and dying for millions. And now I'll choose for you as well. Snap. Wait, what's this? <laughs> what is this? Mr. Reese? <laughs> Did you bring me something to eat, Victor? No? Then that makes you two, two of equal, two of you equal, doesn't it? Uh, yes. And, you know, I remember saying this, like, issue two, that, yeah, you know, Doom does not have the power. Owen has the power. And Doom is just channeling mm-hmm. the power. Here, Owen says, mm, power's off. Um, fair is fair, right? <laughs> and we go, rah! <laughs> Uh, battle, battle, battle. Um, this is the first See, thing. I, yeah, I'm sorry. That that page, that page where like their two faces are kind of, you know, squared out. But uh, I think it's interesting when uh, I guess Doom says, "This is what always causes your fall." Read abandoning the good because you desire the perfect. Yeah. Oh yes, yes. Is don't you see, Victor? A tree is just a seed in its realized state. Yes. This is what causes you to fall. Read. Abandoning the good because you desire the perfect. I understand now. I know what this is. It's the same thing it's always been between you and I. You think you're better than I am. No, Victor, you're wrong. I've always believed you could be better than what you are. No, I mean now, this moment. If you had this power, you think you could have solved it all, solved everything. You couldn't think you could have done so much better. Don't you? Don't you? Says Yes, and we both know it, don't we? (laughs) Yes, damn you, now die. And then, okay then, if you both agree, wait, no. (gasps) And then, and this is, this I love is, Tala takes the time stone and jumps back. It worked. And of course, we see that this is actually at the very start of this, except we don't get an incursion. We get a rocket launch of the Alpha Flight. No. The space we just saw last week in um, uh, the Ultimates and another which so, but yeah. So and I thought that was supposed to be the Canadian Space Agency. No, it's the Condon Space Agency dragging the world on its back. And oh, well, well, yeah, that's kind of. Uh, I think it's going to play in big in Captain Marvel next week too, because I think that's who she works with. That now is going to be Alpha Flight. Yes, and um, uh, New York City. We see Miles. We see how Miles got saved says, hey, little spider person, before you go, I want to tell you something. Uh, okay, what? Thanks for the burger. I owe you one. <laughs> got his whole world back. Uh, and they go off. He got more than his, he, get, he got more than that because uh, when, when Peter asked him, you know, did your mom, did you tell your mom what you're doing? Because his mom was dead in the Ultimate Universe. She got killed by uh, Venom. I know. It's, it's pretty awesome. He actually came out on top. And then we find out what the Fantastic Four are doing. Basically, they're rebuilding the multiverse with Owen. Um, Because basically, when they create a new multiverse, they get to separate Owen out and uh, create a new Owen and help to stabilize the Molecule Man. And we get that. Basically, Reed and the Future Foundation, including Adolf Impossible, which I thought was an interesting thing to add there. Um, Uh... Uh, they all agree that they're going to sort of explore and rebuild the omniverse with um, Dragon Man. Well, Reed and or well, Ben and Johnny finish their adventures on Earth, um, and Reed's just going to be a dad for a while. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. Oh yeah. He's got to shave that beard though. And then we get that um, you know he had some help. That help, um, you know, and we, he basically he acknowledges that you know. Says, still, it was enough, Reed. The life wreck broke, and I thought we were done. And then you saved us. He says, well, I had some help. And that help bought me just enough time to fix so many things I, I'd been wrong about. I learned that the difference between living and dying is managing fear, not being so afraid of losing the things you love that you hold them too tight. I used to believe in universal contraction, ent- entropy, and the end of all things. 
Well, I've changed my mind. I'm letting go because now I believe in expansion. I believe we endure. Don't you see? Everything lives. And you see that Doom gets his face back. Not even the scar uh, promised him by the living tribunal. Let's see how long it takes him to screw that up. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mind this was just a perfect book in every conceivable way. I cannot say how much I love this book. This was my pick of the week, and it was just, it hit all my nerd spots. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm kind of sad to see it go now, but yeah, it was it was great. And I hope, I, I do hope we get Reed and Sue back together with the Future Foundation. I mean, how, heck, you know what I would love to see? I'd love to see a new FF book of Reed and Sue in the Future Foundation exploring cosmoses, exploring and creating oh, yeah. That would be awesome. Make it happen, Marvel. Uh, and that's all the books <laughs> for a big ninety-minute uh, episode. I was gonna say maybe our biggest ever. <laughs> yeah, boy, doggy. Feel like I feel like we're rebuilding the multiverse. Yeah, but well, we're mm-hmm. certainly reading it. Oh yeah. All right. Is that it? That is all of it. Yes. I was gonna say you better be satisfied, people. <laughs> it was a lot. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, before we go, go check out. I think it's on the Nuff Said feed, and it's also on some of my DC feeds. The Marvel vs. DC crossover is up, so check it out. And let us know what you think about that, about the Marvel comics, anything Marvel. Email us, marvelroundup at gmail.com. On Facebook, we're all new Marvel Roundup. And on Twitter, we're at Marvel underscore Roundup. And Charlie, where can people find you? Well, you can always find write to me at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. And, of course, you can follow me on the Twitters, where very soon we're going to be live tweeting Agent Carter, the second Avenger, um, <laughs> on ABC's Tuesday night, night before my birthday. Hooray! Um, and you can tweet with me at Charlie Esser, that's C-H-A-R-L-I-E-E-S-S-E-R. Look for the two E's in the middle for quality. And you can talk anything Marvel or DC with me, NightwingPDP at gmail.com. And on Twitter, I am at NightwingPDP. All right. (laughs) Go home, sit down, digest everything we just told you, and come back next week. I know, at least for me, it's not quite as big a week. I think, like I told you, I only have like maybe five books, four or five books, so we'll take it easy on you next week. But come back and join us. Because remember, if Doom can get his face back, anything is possible. Good night. Good night.